Welcome one and all to the very beginning of something new. I don't know exactly what I want to call this, but uh, I'm Tyson Nafis, better known on the internet as Socio, Psycho, a um, myriad of other characters, and I'm going to try playing games and seeing if people like following uh, me playing these video games. So, uh, first one up is FTL. It's been done quite a bit, and actually it uh, was one of the first new quote-unquote PC games that I ever played. I really like to stick to the classics. If you couldn't tell from my movie selection, and this this game really appealed to me on many levels. I mean, it's rogue. You got no idea going in exactly what's going to happen. And that's got a nice chaotic element to it. You're not going to get the same playthrough twice. You're not going to get bored. But you have to play strategically. And sometimes, even when you do your best to strategize, you're not going to come away with half of what you wanted to. I mean, <laughs> this game can be absolutely brutal. But if you're lucky enough, and you're smart with your resources, you can be just as brutal back to it. I mean, I've lost any number of times to the flagship. And that's why you'll see me play on easy, because... I played the original version, and I just recently upgraded to the one that has the Advanced Edition content. And as I'll show you guys, I haven't exactly just started playing it, so I feel this is a good place to come in. I've unlocked almost every ship, except for my crystal ship. Oh, that crystal ship. I'll tell you a story about that guy later. If I ever find the quest again... I mean, otherwise, unlocking Type A, Type B for every other ship, that's not bad. I strangely got this guy, the Linus Cruiser. Linus Cruiser? Sorry. I got him about, I'd say, 15th time through. I ran into that encounter, which unlocked both him and the Federation Cruiser. I'm like, wow, this is a totally new area, and I won the first time I ran into him. I've had such luck replaying this game. I haven't done it for more than, like, three days, and I've almost unlocked all the ships. Not all of their types, obviously. Sadly, the only Type B I've unlocked was this Angie Cruiser. Uh, uh, maybe that's for a different playthrough, but I want to show one that is fun to play. And the Lanius Cruiser Type A... I was surprised how much fun I had with this, but I think most of it was that I found the Vulcan gun, or the Vulcan... The one that every time... It costs four power, but every time it fires, it gets faster. So you are literally firing one shot every second. That combined with the chain lasers, that's how I got the victory with that guy. Yeah, look at that, look at that victory. Yeah. But... Let's see what a fun one is. I could go basic and just hope for the best. Cruiser Type A, not my favorite. I, I wish I had a Type B unlocked right now, because starting with a Glaive Beam, oof, it's easy street. You know what? Let's go with the Federation Cruiser Type A. It, you've got a nice little selection of different... Now let's go ahead and make this customized. Uh, socio as a captain, human, all right, yeah, that works. Let's see, we've got Mantis, someone a little more brutal, a little more sadistic, a little more fighty. Don't know where I got... The guy who is rock stupid. Um, yeah, that wrote itself. And then we've got the technical one who... Hmm. There we go. It makes sense for Bacchus and Kelvin to be in the same ship together. So there we got our pairs. And let's name this... Showcase. All right. And... Hmm. I think we'll start with easy. Just just to have the most amount of fun. Daycare is vital. So make sure to explore each sector before moving on. And the tips are always changing. Uh, that's what I like about this. You actually can learn something, especially the first couple times playing, by sitting and reading the tips every time. Because the tips do eventually repeat, but they are varied enough to where you feel like you're, it's worth your time reading. And one thing I really did like with this upgrade, oh, the ability to save your crew positions. Because there was nothing more annoying than getting everyone into the med bay and going, okay, everyone's healed up. Now, which, who did what? And then going through all their stats. And you just go, okay, everyone, back to positions. And poof, they spread and scatter. 
All right, Burst Laser 2. That's a very good one. I've actually won entire games with nothing but Burst Laser 2s. Three of them, and then a couple of Ion Blasts. You, you've got a killer combination there. And for the showcase piece, uh, let's go ahead and throw some of that scrap right away into maxing out our engines. I mean, that's not the best idea in the world, but I've got someone on engines, so the DM may be able to pull his weight and learn some stuff. Okay, I've got a first distress beacon right away. Oh, one of the fire... That's what I also really love about these Federation cruisers, where you have a nice mix of, of crew. Your blue options appear right away. Let's go ahead and send in that fireproof rock crew member. Yep. They're the, the, the galaxy's best firemen right there. Ooh, I got fire suppression. <laughs> if they had the fire suppression augment, you'd think they would have implemented it for their own ship, but... Who am I to judge? Okay, that's good. We're starting off some good amount of scrap collecting. Usually I try to hold off in the first sector from spending any amount of scrap. Oh, let's go ahead and find this rebel ship. Hopefully, yep, we find him quickly enough. Let's hope he's easy to defeat as he was to find. Oh, that's what I should have done right away. So this ship, I love... Oh, let's turn on auto fire. I love the auto gun. Autogun has got to be one of my favorite things that they put into the first game. Because it just sits there and charges. Yes, it'll take 40 or 50 seconds if you don't put any effort or any upgrades into it. But eventually, if you put all four, every 20 seconds, you get an all shield piercing beam that will cut across almost the entire length of most small ships. No joke, that's usually how this ship wins the game. I spend a lot of money and a lot of upgrades into making this maxed out. It doesn't matter if you're slightly subpar on your guns. 13 scraps, 6 missiles. No, sorry, can't accept that surrender. If you barter for better, I mean, I'm all, th I'm all for it, but uh, you get one shot. So there we go, look at that! That artillery beam just sliced them in half. So you see, I got some fuel out of that now. I'm not heartless, I'm just practical. I need fuel, I didn't need missiles. If I ever get something with missiles, remind me to sell it, because I don't like the missile-based systems. But the only one that was worth it was a Pegasus. I believe that's what it was. The one where for every one missile you fired, you actually got two. That is some quality savings. They cut my engines? Aw. Oh, I really should start reading this if I want it to be a watchable Let's Play. So, every encounter... I have Now that I'm run, running the new content... I haven't actually seen all of these encounters before. That's something that actually caused me to stop playing for a while, because, you know, you've seen it all. You know exactly what's going to happen. Sometimes the game punishes you for that. There's one uh, encounter in particular where you're approaching and you see a number of moons, and it describes it in the flavor text. If you actually don't read that, and you don't remember how many moons there were, and you answer incorrectly, your crew gets punished. Like, someone turns into a space baby, or you lose a lot of your stuff, something like that. If you answer correctly, you are rewarded for paying attention to the detail. So this game, it, it makes you want to pay attention. Alright, so your ship system's restored to full functionality, you salvage what you can from the debris. Eh, I took a couple hits, but I guess for 11 scrap it wasn't the worst. Another awesome thing is, in the old game... If you had more than enough crew to man everything, you had no teleporter. Basically, you had four people standing around uh, sucking their thumbs. Now, with the doors and the, and the surveillance able to be manned, just like Pilot, you get some nice bonuses. Like, right now I'm getting basically the second upgrade of doors for absolutely free. I know, the internet has seen this for years and years, but it's still, from, coming from someone who played the original non-upgraded version for a long time, it's a huge step in the right direction, and I didn't even realize how much the original game was missing until I played this upgrade. Okay, ooh, scrap recovery arm. If you can get it early on, always, always buy that scrap suppression arm. As I said, scrap suppression arm. Fire suppression. I'm contemplating selling the fire suppression 
if I can get the burst laser three. Because that's one, it takes up a lot of slots and it takes 19 seconds to charge, but it's five shots per charge. That's why I like the Bristol Laser 2 stacked, because their charge times are going to be a lot less, 12 seconds. For, so you can see, for the amount of power you're using, if you can get two of the Bristol Laser Mark 2s, you're going to have a lot better, not only um, attack against your opponents, but you're also going to not be as susceptible to your guns being damaged. Like, if one of those power bars goes down, like if you, you get shot with a missile, you lose a little bit of that burst laser 3, it's all gone. You lose one of your burst laser 2s, you still have the other burst laser 2 that's going to fire off. So, I definitely need to get the scrap recovery arm. And I got the fleet breathing down my neck here. But, let's see if for some random reason I get a huge amount of scrap from this. Yeah, let's figure out what happened to that cargo ship. That sounds great. Last known coordinates and send over some supplies. Okay, so I get some supplies. And now I forgot... Oh, it's in this sector. Okay. Not too many jumps. That's that's going to be the saving grace there. Because if it were a lot of... Oh, no, no, no. The scout ship. They're going to warn the fleet that I'm here. And I think... Yeah, that that would not be good. In fact, I think they're going to be able to make the jump before my main artillery beam charges. Yeah, they're definitely going to be able to. Hey, look, the fire suppression system is working. I don't even need to vent the hold like I usually do. I'm still going to. It's a good idea. Best way to fight fire is with lack of oxygen. God, I'm not doing well on this run. But that's okay. I'm still explaining the basics here. And that's... Oh, I should have shot the engine. <sighs> and this is another cool update. They finally told you, instead of in vague terms, hey, the fleet's going to find you faster, they're now telling you pursuit doubled for one jump. Not good. Okay. New Leaf in the next sector, I swear I will read all the descriptions, and I'll even try to throw in some flavor text if there's dialogue. You detect an automatic rebel scout attacking a small refueling outpost. Let's intervene to defend the outpost. Detecting a higher threat, they move in to engage your ship. Yes, I will probably paraphrase the entire time. If that bothers any of you, I do apologize. Oop! No! You shot the po Oh, no, 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 my cockpit is down. Oh, uh, not what you want. Let's get rid of that drone. I was more worried about the drone right now than the missiles. Okay, there we go. Now, the reason I waited until I got rid of the drone to fire, or to move the NG over to repair things is that the shield's recovery is increased with him. My, oh, I forgot to read again. The outpost hails you after the scout was destroyed. Thanks for the help! We've been harassed non-stop by those scouts! Take this on the house! This being an assortment of scrap, fuel, and a droid. Oh, better than a kick in the teeth. So. Yeah, I think my next upgrade, considering what I'm finding myself coming up against, should probably be shields. Because you want at least two level shields. Oh, Socio, you got shot. I forgot to heal you. You find the missing cargo docked to an empty space station. However, their hold appears to be empty, and there are no obvious signs that anyone is inside the ship or station. It looks abandoned. Hmm. This could be Event Horizon. Let's jump in. Upon closer inspection, a large portion of the hull is destroyed, and you take... 11 scrap. Yeah, I'm on easy and I'm finding like 11, 15 scrap tops. This is ridiculous. Usually on easy, they just hand it out like it's going out of style. Okay. At the long range beacon, when the FTL drive is charged, you can jump to the next sector. There's a black market hub here. Yeah! But black market's the best. I wish I had more missiles to sell because I could really use the scrap for upgrading everything. These are dangerous times. If you have extra military-grade explosives, we'll gladly pay you for them. Mm, yeah, I'm not using them, so here you go. Just uh, don't tell me where you use them, because I don't want to be responsible. 
Oh, man. So, it's a pet peeve of mine. I don't know if it... I've not really watched many of the FTL videos, so I don't know what the norm is here. Um... I do not like the nebulous. If there's a whole nebulous sector, I avoid it. That's just a principle of mine, and it served me well. So I'm going to go to the mantis-controlled section. Plus, I've already got the slug ship unlocked, so why not? By the way, in the original game, there was no way to do the, hey, I beat it with this ship, so I unlock the next ship down the lane. I unlocked all the ships the manual way. And, oh my goodness, that crystal ship for the crystal people, that took me the longest. I I literally went, at one time when I was in class, I got to where I was playing this on autopilot on my laptop while I was taking notes, and happened to run across the stasis pod, happened to run across the Zoltan scientists, and then just happened, before Sector 5, in the Rock Homeworld, to run across that satellite that's orbiting around this long dead planet. And the crystal guy got me into that portal. This is actually the second time I'd gotten to that sector. The first time, I didn't realize I had such a time limit. Because I thought, why would the rebel fleet be able to find this? It's a long lost sector. Well, game pressure remained, and I was one jump away from getting to that quest icon. So there I was, middle of class, professors droning on, and I unlocked the crystal ship. It took all my willpower to focus on actually taking notes. I was so excited. I had to call my friends right away afterward. Okay, I may have been a bit of a fan of this game. Rant over. All right, you've entered the poorly charted area of space that's known to be home to the Mantis. Whew. Ensure your hull plating is up to scratch and that you have enough fuel in the tank to make it through. I really should have gotten a glass of water before I did this. And I also... Um You detect and receive an escape pod floating nearby. You consider returning it to space when you learn it's Mantis. Oh. I don't know. Can you trust a Mantis? He's one of DM's kind. What's the worst I could... A man bursts out of the life pod and claws his way into the corner. A rare survivor of Mantis captivity. Once calm, he, he offers to join your crew for a time. For a time. A.K.A. until he dies. Reinforce the doors. Gotta make you good for something. Okay. Here's the store. Fingers crossed that I find another burst laser too. Struggling, heading for a node, raises well as the shields that you jump in, you power up your weapons as a show of force. They agree to offload some of their cargo on you for a price. Hmm. Yeah, you know, there are entire games that are won with this one augmentation. Weapons immediately made available after an FTL jump. Ho oh, that. That is almost cheating. The clone bay is another fantastic upgrade. It replaces the med bay, so you actually don't have the ability to heal. It's actually not good for people who want to utilize like teleportation techniques. But if you aren't relying on teleport you are going to love this thing. It suddenly makes it very easy for you to keep your crew. You don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about losing them suddenly to a random event, like, oh no, the giant spiders killed one of your crew. The clone bay means, oh no, your crew lost a little bit of their skill. I'm not seeing anything I really want, so I'm just going to repair here. And... Yeah, I think that's it. Ooh, it's tempting. I'm going to do it. Let's go to that distress call. I'm captain of this ship, and until... Alright. The distress signal is coming from the small space station. Sorry. Cat is uh, trying to get my attention here. The distress signal is coming from a small space station orbiting an uninhabited planet. Their satellite defense system has gone haywire. It was one of my favorite encounters, because there's like 17 different ways you can solve it. They're looking for help to dis fix or disable it. If you got an angry crew member, you can repair it remotely. If you've got stealth systems, you can sneak up to it. If you've got ion weapons, you can disable it. It's really one of the easiest encounters to win at. And when they fix it remotely, they thank you pretty well. That's another cool thing. 
depending on how you solve certain situations, affects what rewards you get. This is one of the most annoying things that they've added. The Ion Pulsing Star. You have to frequently use one close to a pulsar. Before long, a ship happens to jump nearby, it looks like you'll have to fight. Even though both of you are going to have stuff randomly stunned throughout the entire fight. Oh my god, and he has a defense drone too. Okay, this is officially going to be a how soon can I jump out of here kind of match. Yep. And it knocks out the shields and the engines right away. Woohoo! At least it knocked out his guns a little bit. I'm taking out that droid next. It hasn't touched the guns. That's all I care about. It hasn't touched the guns. And. Ah! More fire in the brig. Yay, it's taking out their shields too! The game is fair! Alright, they're gonna try and escape. They're not going to escape. Not today. <laughs> this game makes you a little mad with power when you do moderately well. They live in a substantial collection of useful scrap. Substantial's a relative term. I really wish I could get out of here. But at least it's not uh, lighting any parts of my ship on fire. God! D really? As though bringing up the example makes the example happen. Okay. This is the old kind of annoyance. A flaring sun. Which will cause parts of your ships to randomly light on fire. And I can't explain that. Solar flares do not do that. They rip holes in your hull. They completely, you know, cook the inside, but they don't randomly light things on fire. And, oh, maybe I should send over some of my crew to help the rock guy fight. There we go. This is one technique I use whenever I'm near these. What I'm doing is I'm venting the entire hull, except for where my people are, where the oxygen is, and where the doors are. So this way I can... Oop, I should probably close that. It fix the med bay. Oh, he got stunned. I'm gonna get that. Oop. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why. That's one of the reasons why I do that uh, specific area. <sighs> it's gonna run out of oxygen anyway. Where's a Lanius crew member when you need him? Oh, great. This hail is merely a distraction! You notice her shield and weapons have come online. Okay, I, I kind of named the DM appropriately because it's like, THIS HAIL WAS MERELY A DISTRACTION! Is exactly what he'd make one of his NPCs say. Um, okay, let's go ahead and have you do, do the fixing. You hang out in the med bay until we get that engine room repaired. I need to upgrade my shields. Toot sweet. I need to not jump away from the next one. I need to be in a place where I can actually stay after the battle so I can upgrade something before the mini laser tries to kill me. Okay. Now let's close all the doors, get our oxygen supply back. You, man the doors. You, shoot the thing. Yeah, uh, I'm definitely going to upgrade Upgrade the shields one. Yeah, with 34 scrap, I should be able to upgrade the shields, no problem. But then I'm going to start with the artillery. Leave my substantial collection of useful scrap and material. Yeah! I've found, I have found that annoying since I started playing this, how you have to upgrade two bars of shield before you can actually add another layer of shield. I understand that from a game mechanic standpoint, you can't just have four bars each costing that much, it's easier to do it in increments, but it's really pointless for you to upgrade your shields half. You can't actually use that. 
So, on that note, let's go ahead and upgrade our artillery as well. And we'll give another level of doors. So when you have intruders, you want your doors to be able to lock. And we got two layers there, and we got a 40 second cooldown on our artillery. Believe it or not, that's going to help a lot. And help even more. I forgot to heal anyone! Kelvin's the only one at full health. Oh, but it's just someone asking for help. And karma does not pay off here. I have given, if, whenever I can, I give fuel to these people who are stranded. And I would say a good 60% of the time, if I run out of fuel, no one, not a single person comes by who actually wants to give me fuel. They're all either trying to kill me, or it's it's a complete and utter trap by the slugs to steal any stuff I might have. Yeah, they spread to the sector. You've been stranded. Give them fuel. And they upgraded my reactor for free! Yeah! That, that's kind of cool. Honestly, I'm just going to use... Uh, there's a store, but I've got no scrap. So, I will go in the opposite direction. You spot a small rebel ship nearby. It seems to have been refitted to transport rather than for transport rather than combat. It doesn't seem to want to engage you or your ship. Now, the good guy thing to do, and the thing that I did the first couple times when I was playing this as a uh, as a role playing type situation, was avoiding the ship. They're clearly civilians just caught in a rebel ship. Who can blame them? But the scrap happy, I need all the resources I can get. Part of me. There we go. They will always try to jump. You can't blame the guys. I can't even get mad at them. They're just defending themselves. And in fairness, if they ask me to um, terms of surrender, I will usually accept the terms of surrender. I'm not here to kill them. They just happen to be in the wrong boat. That's all. So... I do love that even if you don't have your sensors upgraded at all, you can still see exactly where everything is in the enemy ship. Because without that, honestly, this game would kind of suck. You'd just be shooting at random, and shooting strategic sites is such an important strategy. Like, his FT the uh, Faster Than Light jump is charging right now. Oh, they didn't want to surrender. <laughs> You're transporting prisoners. And the sole survivor officer join your crew as a first step in his path to get revenge. Revenge against who? Because I'm kind of the one that blew up the thing that your friends are being transported on. Let's go ahead and have you man the cameras. I trust you. You won't lie to me if you see something. And, uh, you'll tell me. I got a feeling. Okay. Your world all of a sudden changes. The Mantis are on board your ship. The, the Mantis interactions are so overdramatic. And you get out of there. You get in here. You also get in here. Let's go ahead and just run you all this way. And open the hold. This is my favorite technique for taking care of villains. If you got strong doors, you don't have to worry. Yes, those are Engi, the weakest combatants, fighting against the Mantis, the strongest combatants. This battle is not going to go well for the Manti. At all. Like, you'll notice just turning the oxygen situation on its head made that guy stop attacking this door and instead go and fight Bacchus. I don't even want to know how Bacchus would fight as a rock guy. I that would just be so irritating that I don't want to try and reenact it. Okay, that's a lie. Oh man, your pincers, they so hard against my skin. Oh no, my skin is tearing your skin apart because I'm in a rock. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go with my instinct next time and... Let's have everyone go back to their... Oh, I... S oh! That's the problem with being new to this game. I just accidentally saved the positions, so now I do have to manually sort them out. Ah. Oh, being a newbie is awful. All right. Back, is, back to your station. Yee, boss. And Kelvin's already on top of fixing every problem. DM and Soch, why don't you get some healing on? No reenactment for you two. 
doing your jobs. Get it done. Ah! Uh, Kelvin, I don't want this to be your permanent position. M Marcus, I wish your name was Markel. Bacchus, stop wandering around the ship like a moron. I don't care what I tell you to do. You know your post and stay there, okay? There, okay. Everything's saved now. We're all good. I've got enough fuel. I should be able to safely get the... But then I won't be able to jump back without running into the fleet. And the fleet is the worst kind of combat, because you can never get scrap from them. Only one fuel, enough to get you to the next sec... Uh, the next uh, beacon in the sector. Hey, look, and our mass relay is here. Okay. Across a pirate in hot pursuit of an unidentified ship, you quickly receive a transmission from the pirate. Stay out of this fight and we'll make it worth your while. Once again, on a hero playthrough, I never accept that. And their scrap is not worth it. I'm going to try and be a hero and attack the pirate. Yeah, I've got a little bit more shields now. I feel more confident. And if I get at least 40 scrap from it, it puts me closer to getting another level of my artillery beam, so... That's a good thing. I really need a second gun, though. Because soon I'm not going to be able to get through anyone's shield. For instance... Oh, it actually worked. They only have one layer. Good. It's still an early sector, so... If you take out their engines, you can automatically hit their... Sh hmm... Four fuel isn't bad. If I were low, I'd take this deal. But I'm going to con continue the assault, because they're dirty pirates. Why aren't you going back to the shield? That Engi totally missed the... Well, the shield wouldn't have mattered anyway. Look at that! No, I don't get any fuel. No, I don't get any droids. But I do get more scrap than I would have just playing nicely with them. Thank you for your aid. An arms dealer unusually work with rebels, but considering this, I'll make an exception. Hmm. Weapon sign damage increases for each time it fires up to a max of four. But it only fires once every 14 seconds. See, it's like the heavy ion. I, I just don't like it. The problem is, with that much gap, you're banking everything on one shot. And if that shot misses, it's over. I would rather take... I think it's the Ion Blast 2, which fires one Ion thing every four seconds. More speed is definitely going to save the day on this. God, I am just not getting anything. And if I repair right now, I... won't be able to upgrade my artillery. So, I'll upgrade that quick. Make myself more deadly. And, oh wait, back to the store. Repair as much as I can. I got plenty of personnel. I don't need to worry about that. I will, with the extra fuel, make a jump to this random beacon. Hopefully it's something good. Hey! You arrive in system and immediately discover a pirate ship. There are no life forms aboard. You salvage anything useful, but find no clues to the whereabouts of the former crew. Well, sucks to be them. All right. Yeah, I'm not going to that store. I'm just going to vacate the sector quick. But I'll finish feeling... Healing my ship. Hmm. Hard to tell I play a lot of role-playing games. Abandoned sectors. I always go to the abandoned sectors now. Because I love interacting with the Lanius. Especially their translators. Getting a translator is a steal. The war tore through this civilization sector. And just recently, even the few life signs that remained have begun blinking out. Rumors suggest the Reapers are responsible. I, this was in no way influenced by Mass Effect. Not with the... The... Never mind. We're prepared to fight, but they do not seem to carry any weapons. After a brief moment, your translator struggles with unfamiliar dialect. They wish to trade. 21 scrap for 4 fuel. I'm actually going to decline that. They leave without a word. They're so rude. Let's go to that distress beacon. Because while four fuel they may not seem like much, ooh, new distress beacons coming to the surface of a nearby moon. There's a single life form down there. Let's see how he's doing. You find a man living alone in a cave. From the appearance of his wrecked ship, it seems he's been here for many years. He looks healthy, but his mental state is questionable. 
Now, since I have six people and every station is manned, I'm actually going to leave him to his ravings, because there's a chance if I bring him on, he'll just kill one of my people. And, let's face it, I'm even manning the doors and the sensors, so no. That's just not worth it. How did the guy who's abandoned on a planet with nothing to his name get a distress beacon anyway? Your ship is hailed. This is an automated message. Resisting our takeover is pointless. Prepare to die. It appears this rebel ship is run by an AI. An AI programmed with a sense of uh, ironic hostility. Okay, the hacking drone. If it's on my weapons, I will jump. Oh, you've got to be kidding me! I am taking that thing out immediately. This is one of my least favorite things. Because even if you have a defense drone against, specifically, the hacking drones, it doesn't help. You'll get maybe five or six of those drones. One will get through your shield, and then it's game over. I have actually jumped away from interactions with the flagship based on the fact that their first attack has a hacking drone, and whatever it attaches to, it screws you. In fact, the, the game that I just played before I started recording this, I had this guy attached to my oxygen twice, both jumps, and I thought, okay, I'll just go ahead and manage it. How bad could it be? <laughs> he killed off all of my crew, except for the two that made it to the med bay and the one Lanius, because they literally drained my ship of all oxygen with that dumb little hacking droid. Okay, the ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap metal. And I ended up losing that game, because I didn't have enough people to man all my stations. Oh, man. I'm not bitter. I'm just, I'm just disappointed that it ended that badly. All right. The rebel ship is controlling this region. As soon as you arrive, it begins its assault. And some interactions are going to be basic, Jane, like that. Let's see. You got droids. There you are, you ion pulsing droid. Yeah, go ahead and block out this. I really don't care if you take out my sensors. I don't need them to beat you. So. I'll take out your shields first. And. Nope. Yeah, I had a feeling you'd be going over this way. Let's now concentrate fire on your navigation. You, got nothing to do. Get over there. Aw, oh, crap. You know, considering how much it's trying to wreck my crap right now, and I am down to 11 fuel, I will take this offer. Please don't kill us! We'll give you everything we have! I doubt that's everything you have, but I'll take it anyway. Okay. Well, that could have gone better, but it also could have gone worse. Not Markel, you get in there. This is where I really wish I had the second level of oxygen. Because with two, I think it's actually th the third level of oxygen ramping, you can actually get total um, oxygen even in an area that has a breach. Which, phew, that can change your game. Okay, let's see if they have my baby. Do I see another? Okay, no doubt abandoned due to the Lanius threat. Life signatures detect at the ship depot. And you spot a few crude signs stating, Everything must go! Oh, a clearance sale! I love clearance sales! Ooh. Yes. Yes and yes. This is kind of... It's kind of a cousin of the Burst Laser 2. It does fire one less, but eventually it's charge time. It definitely makes up for it. Yes, it's 16 seconds to charge the first time, but if you can hold out until it actually powers itself up, you, you have a treat. That's the one that helped me win the game without even trying. An image of some weak and hungry humans come onto your screen. Those metal bastards think they can just absorb half our engines and leave us here to die? 
I hope you understand the need to take your ship by force. Oh, God! It's Rick and the gang! In space! Alright, you zombie-killing fools! You think you can just come in here and take all of our stuff? Well, no! I'll have you know I've got more rights than that! Okay, yes, it'd be more like the saviors, and that's exactly how I'm going to treat them. I'm just going to vent the hold. Oh, no, they're going to lose some of their life. Oh, I'm so sad. Oh, come in and die. All right. Let's run a third person and get ourselves some fighting experience. Hopefully I don't need it, but it's nice to have just in case. You know, the funny thing is, I think Kelvin is doing a much better job at fighting than... Uh, than, than he should be. He actually, I think, has done most of the fighting in this. Yeah, Kelvin... No, Bacchus. Of course, Bacchus has Kelvin's back. In fact, I'm surprised Bacchus didn't run right in there and try to run them over. Okay. Ah, that's perfect. Now let's go ahead and return to stations. Oh, I clicked the right button this time. All right. Fix everything up. Power it up. The bad thing about the intruders on board, it's never a scrap-worthy event. Like, seriously, you never get scrapped for those encounters. Ah! Second one in a row. I love those were the saviors. This has to be Rick's gang. And I apologize to everyone who's a fan of The Walking Dead. I'm going to have to kill them all. It's nothing personal. It's, you know, space. Let's have them break into there. Watch, watch as they methodically break into this area. And then I vent the hold. And then they go, oh, no. We can't live in here. Get us through. All right, we'll kill this. Okay, never mind. You know what? We can't live anywhere. Every time we find someplace nice, people want to kill us. It's the weirdest. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. This keeps happening to them. All right, let's close it up. Turn the air back on. And even at a quarter health, they're enough to almost take out all of my endgame. Thank you, Bacchus, for backing them up, because I think they actually would have died if you hadn't been there. Alright. There's a lot of repetition to how how you win this game. But there's almost a routine that builds based around what you do. And that's one of the things that I think keeps people playing it for years. Yes! Oh, good. I was afraid that I might have accidentally marked the everything as a <clears throat> satellite, or not satellite, shield. Apologize, it's been a long day for me here. But let's go to the exit and see if there's a store nearby. If there's another... Inv okay. Charge, you can jump to the next sector. You jump into a field of debris. It appears a battle recently took place here, and the loser seems to have been a civilian ship. Which was left on repeat before it was destroyed. Rebels attacking! Please send aid! The responsible rebels are likely still nearby. Yeah, let's go look for him. Fleet Pursuit doubled for one jump. Great. After far too much time spent searching, I should have just not looked for these guys. Because now I'm going to have to jump out of here after this encounter. Okay. So. Yeah, if I get a good amount of scrap from this, I'm going to go ahead and activate my chain laser. And then I'm going to put the... I'm going to reorder it now. Because if the burst laser gets attacked, that's not a bad thing. I turn it on, it goes right back to its maximum. The chain laser, if it powers down, you have to start over. On the charging. No! No! Bars, get on that! It should be your job to fix that. That's so much more important than the doors at this point. The ship... The enemy ship appears to be powering up. It's trying to escape! Why would they ever try to escape? Hmm. 19 scrap. Repeatedly hails me. It looks like they want to surrender. Nah. You know, the funny thing is, in reality, they I wouldn't have been able to accept that surrender anyway, because that last shot to destroy them was already on its way. I've actually done that before when I had a fire that was running on another person's ship, and I accepted their surrender when they had one bar of health left. So it's like, oh, I went ahead and, uh, yeah, accepted the surrender. You guys can live. The fire apparently kept raging and destroyed a subsystem, which blew up the ship. I'm like, now I feel just like, a, I feel like I should have just killed them, because they were dead anyway. This game kind of makes you into a sociopath. 
All right. Ooh, a store. That was the defeat of I guess I can't go to that store until next uh, next time I play. Speaking of, I don't know how long people would like to sit and watch this, so um, I'm going to go ahead and save here. And you guys tell me, do you want me to go to the Engi homeworlds? And then, obviously, avoid the nebula... Uh, the nebulae going this direction, or do you want me to go to the mantis controlled section where I will have to go through my arch nemesis? I mean, I don't go through the nebulas as much, and I haven't since the advance, so it might be a good idea to go into those anyway. But I'll leave the decision up to you. Am I going to the Engi homeworlds or the mantis controlled sector? Please leave a comment and uh, tell me what you think of this format. If we, you guys like it. I do have more games on my computer that I can play and record, and uh, I don't know if I can take much for requests because I'm kind of limited on what I can get onto my computer. Um, it's a long story. But anyway, let me know. Engie Homeworlds or Mantis Controlled? If you want one or two.